<laughs> greetings, greetings. And thank you so much for joining me on Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 24. This is going to be a good topic for those who are interested in just straight basic life skills, opportunities, um, housing, um, business development, or just something you want to do and you're thinking about starting your own business and you don't know where to start, feel free to give me a call, 330-956-0511. So let's jump right into the episode. So today is August the 15th, 2023. Beautiful day, beautiful day. So we're going to talk about unprofessional behavior. I think that is a topic that needs to be cleared up and shared for those who may have emotional feelings about what disrespect in the workplace is, what unprofessional behavior is, especially on a level of independent contracting and um, business development. So that's what our topic is about. So I went to the Minnesota um, Minnesota Association of Professional Employees, and I found a policy manual regarding unprofessional and disrespectful behavior. So I was told recently that I was unprofessional in a in a process that involved a lot of different things going on. So you're going to have in the midst of activities, you're going to have individuals who are, are emotionally driven because of the fact that, you know, they're excited, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on and um, there may be a sense of entitlement at that time. But what we don't do is title someone something that they're not. There are three types of of concepts that we can have within this idea. The first one could be sabotage because of the fact that if it didn't happen and you're claiming that someone is unprofessional, this is what you're going to be looked at. This is how the professional will then look at you um, in saying this, sabotage. That was my immediate thought, okay? Then it went to emotion. And then I kind of, you know, mellowed down a little bit. Because when a person comes for me with all the experience that I have, with all the education that I have, with all the openness to doing what I do, when they come for me, they better come correct. They better come correct. Because I am not going to be humble. I'm coming for war. Like Beyonce. Get loose, get low, get low. Whoa. You got to respect my brand. We're on the front line here. And that's something that our power, you'll never take. Okay. So when a person calls me a professional, they better know what they're saying. So the first thing, back to the three, sabotage, emotion, and just straight ignorance. They just didn't know. So the first thing you do when you call someone out of character, you have something to back it up. And these things are called facts. Now, as a business developer, I will show you how to handle yourself to be ready for war. And in business, war is nothing more than court. That's it. So when you are putting yourself in a position of being called unprofessional, you sit back and you think about it. Am I? Am I a professional? Number two, how do I know I am or I'm not? The research. Number three, what have I done about it? Those are the three focus points that you need to follow as an entrepreneur moving into business. I don't care if you're selling popsicles at the corner or lemonade at a corner lot. You need to know. These are things you need to know. So according to MAPE, disrespectful and or unprofessional behavior 
is a workplace policy offering descriptions of disrespectful and unprofessional behaviors. I'm going to give you some examples. Well, first, I'm going to go back and I'm going to share with you Um, there comes a time in a business developer's life, you're going to have to make decisions of what, who you're going to connect with, who, what areas of, um, organization you're going to use. Are you going to use your electricity to bring attention to an event? Are you going to use water? Will someone say that they got sunburnt because of the water and now they're trying to sue. You have to know if you're going to turn on your commercial oven in 90 degree weather to boil eggs when you can get you an electric range or a roaster and you can do the same thing. Preventing increase in heat, potential fallouts, potential strokes, et cetera, et cetera. As a business developer, you're going to have to go through that. Then there's going to be times where you're going to have to decide how much space do you give one contractor versus another? You're going to have to sit back and you're going to say, okay, like in my example, I have to empower 12 students to get free tutoring services at, through a grant that tutors our inner city students and they get $1,000 worth of tutoring. That is valuable. And it's just as valuable as an individual who is helping youth ages 18 to 27 receive the basic life skills that they're in need of as a resource in the community, okay? But the Youngstown Community Center is the facility. It, it, it facilitates all of the resources as a resource themselves, ourselves. So there is no way that I'm going to acknowledge one organization over another um, in this example because of the fact that both are valuable to the growth of YCC. So in, in other words, I'm going to Maybe allow one organization the opportunity to be hands-on, get in the community, step out there, go knock on the doors, introduce themselves and tell them, hey, I'm down here. I'd like you to come to the event. We got to, you know, this, that and whatever. And we want to introduce you. And if not, thank you. I just want you to know we're here. Hands-on. I don't need to be as hands-on with that organization because they're already in the process of soft in introducing themselves to the community. But I do need to be hands-on with a, a company who needs to get specifically 12 students because I want my students to excel. I want my community students in the inner city to excel and to get this opportunity through the Department of Education is the most vital thing that I can do as an entrepreneur, business developer, and a potential um, grantee to this opportunity so that these kids can have a better life. That was more valuable. So yes, I'm going to be more hands-on with that individual, but this is how I run my business. I don't have to explain myself to anyone because I've already done the groundwork. But just to be clear, just to be transparent, just to be professional, I'm going to share this. But being told that I'm unprofessional, these are the definite determinations of what unprofessional behavior is in the workplace. Okay. Shouting, abusive language, threats of violence, use of obscenities, nonverbal expression of aggression, giving a middle finger, giving gang signs, different things like that. Behavior that a reasonable person, reasonable person would find to be demeaning, humiliating, or bullying. Deliberately destroying, damaging, or obstructing someone's work performance, work product, tools, or materials. Use of this policy and procedure 
to make knowingly false complaints. Those are the basics of what an organization is looking for legally. So I'm going to give you some business development advice for free right now. Okay. I need you to know that when you come to someone and you say that they're unprofessional, you better have a claim, a factual basis, not an emotional basis and not an ignorant basis. Because this is what business development is about, researching, finding out, was I any of these? And I recall I had a lot of things going on. I had a great deal of pressure, but I've been there before. So it wasn't my first rodeo. So I definitely knew who I could put into place. And I did. I definitely observed my establishment because number one, um, no one, (laughs) no one, um, has to be responsible for anything except for myself in the kitchen. When kitchen, when community is handling food, the first thing we do, if we are transparent, if we are clear in communication, and if we have communication that has not been defaulted, At Youngstown Community Center, the very first thing you would have done before you handed any food out to the public was sign our policy and procedure that you don't have any type of the expectations of what um, nausea, uh, vomiting, um, HIV, um, COVID, Once you sign that documentation, then I allow you into my kitchen. We just don't go into the kitchen. Then we wash our hands. Then we put our hairnets on. Then we put our aprons on. And because this is the rule of a commercial kitchen. So without communication, it would have been all hell. Everybody would have been doing everything they wanted to do. But if the state had came in, who would have been accountable? YCC. And these are the things that we have to be mindful of when we are talking professionalism. But I digress. I'm going to go back to the procedures. Let's talk about communication and meeting people. In a public arena, people meet people all the time. Now, if we're at a basketball game, Uh, No one has the opportunity to literally say, you can't, please don't share numbers because I don't want someone to manipulate that number. I don't want someone to call and, and, and play to be some type of, you know, whatever professional. And then they're associated with YCC. And so now we're looking at defamation of characters. We're looking at fraud. We're looking at identity theft. We're looking at all this stuff because guess what? Some people I meet, I meet the day that I meet them. I don't know them years back. So when I connect to someone, don't just assume that Youngstown Community Center knows anyone. Because this is how we all get played, especially our seniors and our young adults and our youth. Because guess what? You can have predators right in the midst of us and we not know it. So my goal is to keep everybody safe. That's the goal. Okay, so so I want you to understand the significance of being professional in a public arena versus being professional in a public community center. We know I know that you sign in. I know you by name, but I don't get your identification. I don't know if you're John Schmo. I don't know if you're John Klo. Okay, I don't know who you are. But what I'm going to do is let you know that I'm going to know something about you. But when we have a public event, yes, that is networking. That is, yes, let's share. I'm going to give you this information. I'm going to give you my phone number. We did meet at this location for a public event, not a business event. Not a, I'm going to collaborate and connect you with this business because they're in a building with me. There's a difference. So now you take that and then you go to 
I was not treated fairly because you were too hands-on, hands-on with one organization and not the other. Entitlement. Entitlement. That's all that was. It was not unprofessional behavior. It was entitlement. I have given everyone the same opportunity to shine the way they do. I am not an advertisement committee. I may post you on Facebook live, however I do it. I may say that come on down to the YCC and meet this organization, meet that organization. Come and support. Or I may just say, come and get some birthday cake. And you just happen to come to get the cake and then this is going on. Now it's up to you to go over there and introduce yourself, not me. And then I may have other things like emergency events happening. Excuse me. Emergency events taking place specifically because something came up. We may have a housing issue that I may have to adhere to. I may have to do an emergency interview. I may have to go and show an emergency um, a room for an emergency housing situation. I put people in position. I leave. I come back. All is well. But it had nothing to do with who I choose to introduce. Because one thing about it, be very, very clear, as an independent contractor, as a volunteer, as a staff member, no one will ever know the intricate workings of every single thing that I do. Because half the time, I can be remote, I can be at another location, I can be at this location, everything can be shut down at YCC, but business can be going on inside of YCC via Zoom. Like this, I can have a classroom of 50 people, 200 people, or 3,000 people. And business can be going on daily at YCC without me even being there, without anyone being there. So the point I'm trying to say is when you come for me, please know what you're saying. So let's go and look at some examples of when using the respectful workplace policy, you will will have the option to use what is known as an informal complaint process. You can do a verbal process with me, or you can do an informal process on paper, or you can do a um, professional um, formal process complaint. Okay. But when you do realize what it's doing to you, what it's doing to your small business, what it's doing to you as a person. So I have what is known as a professional board of directors and I have a community board of directors. I need to do that because sometimes my professional board of directors may be out of country. They may be looking for money. They may be supporting me in another way and I cannot take up their time with the mundane little community situations, like whether I should turn on a commercial oven in 89 degree weather or provide a grill outside. (laughs) You know, what should I do? I should be able to know that. And if I have issues such as that, that I need to get more clarity and advice, I use what is known as my community board of directors my community advisors, more say. And then I take what they say. They're my task force. They encourage me to use whatever process is most viable. And then they back me up as a resource to the situation in case I ever need to go to court, in case I ever need to validate how the situation went down because people can say I did anything at any time. Okay, and that's understandable. That's why I take on the beauty of having a big building, but I only use a few people at a time. I schedule you. I make sure that everything is decently and in in order because of the very fact 
that anyone can sabotage everything you've worked for just to prove that they have the power to do so. And I need you to know that, entrepreneurs. I don't care if you're selling lemonade on the corner or you're selling um, the top-notch gadget that you have patented yourself. Be mindful of that. So it's saying that um, the first thing you do is communicate. So let's just go there. I don't want to go any further because I don't want to bore you with the business concepts of this. But there are always going to be times that HIPAA is going to prevent me from being able to share all of my Rolodex collaboratives with individuals. So please don't feel that self-entitled, number one. Number two, realize that if you stay in your lane and you do what you do, you're going to meet everybody you need to meet anyway. Number three, please realize that community is about growth and please do your research before you put a title on anyone. Before you say that I am unprofessional, before you come for me, do your factual check basis because it will not look right. It will not look nice if I do a document that proves otherwise. Because now that's defamation of character. And I need you to understand, when you defame a person's character, that can destroy everything that they're working to build long before you ever met them. So please be mindful of that. I think everyone who has taken on the initiative to have the potential to get up and do something with your life and start your business, but never duplicate or carbon copy. One thing about duplication and carbon copy is everyone is going to know who was who first. They're always going to know. So if you take something, give credit where it's due. Otherwise, it's called plagiarism. And if you are intentionally trying to duplicate a service and you have no passion, you have no goal, you have no real true vice, and it's just an easy, open opportunity, come clean, come drug and alcohol free, come in your right consciousness state, be awake, be aware, do your research, have your certification together, because there is no way that I am going to initiate a collaboration with anyone without a certification. You need some type of degree. Okay? Okay. You're going to need to show me who your references are. These people think that they can come in and just give me the, give me the smell. Just give me the story. Just give me the story. Just share the story. Yeah, that's one thing when you're just telling a story. But when you're trying to do something and be something and have something that officiates with the Youngstown Community Center, you better come with your licensing, bonding. You better come with your portfolio. You better come with your staffing. You better come with your regional uh, accreditations. You better come with your international accreditations. And these are things I don't even really speak about because I don't want people to think. I I definitely don't use my titles. I could use Dr. Doreen and Shine any time. But the reality of it is, do I need to? Can I just be a person helping another person? I think that is so so much better. But when someone comes in with a sabotaging self-entitlement um, perspective, they think the world belongs to them. And then when I show them who I, who I am, they're like, oh, so she really did know what she was doing. Yeah, I absolutely do. I absolutely do. I just don't flaunt it. I don't have to ride in, uh, um, a Tesla to be 21st century. (laughs) You, You feel me? I don't have to empower someone by showing them the gadgets and the pearls and the things that I have. I can be a regular human being because those are the ones that nobody recognizes. 
and go after because they don't see the bling. But I'm going to shine in my own way. So for those who are really and truly trying to determine what is unprofessional behavior, do your research. Go online. Google is free to every smartphone application. Okay, if you pay your bill, you can Google what is unprofessional behavior. Do that. So then that way, when you come for me and you call me unprofessional, you'll have a reason to. But other than that, I suggest you be careful what you say and what you call me. Whether we're in a private conversation or we're in a public arena. I am not having a pissing match with a client. I will remove myself and my business and I will disassociate altogether and move on to someone who really needs me. I thank you so much for being here, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And yes, some of this may be all the way over many uh, people's heads. I'm not going to say all, a lot of people. I'm going to say some people. So if I did go back, I got to get used to saying some people now because my, my Rolodex is getting bigger and bigger and I'm realizing there's a lot of beautiful people in this world. There's only one or two of the ones that try to come in to get something for nothing or try to come in to fake it to make it or try to come in to, you know, sabotage. I, I get it. This is a whole world. And I meet so many beautiful people everywhere. And I want you all to understand that that's who I want. I don't want to take all the time speaking about individuals because they're having temper tantrums. I want to be able to speak to the individuals who are truly and genuinely trying to do something good, trying to do something productive. And yes, I'm going to get my reward. I'm going to get my reward here and in heaven. So financially, Yes, I am going to charge you. I am going, my time is of value. It's of value. And I've come very far. And I thank you all for being here, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And I appreciate everyone who has reached out through email. Thank you so much for the shares. I'm I'm seeing them on the podcast. I actually looked up my um, views for the week. And I'm at almost 255 views. That's good because when you take the clicks of individuals who just get on for four or five minutes, then you equate it over time. That is what we actually have. 255 viewers who have watched and really listened from beginning to end. So I don't want to hold your time. Thank you so, so much. Um, Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 23. August the 15th, 2023. Thank you. Have a blessed, successful week. And I will see you when I do. Peace.